Now that we're happy with our RBD simulation, we are ready to start emitting our particles. But first of all, we'll do a little bit of house cleaning and cache our results, which is a very common practice in production. So I will add a few nulls, just to keep my file organized. I will change the color of this null to black. I will connect it to the fragment geometry and then connect it to the first input of the RBD bullet solver and call it out fragments. Then I will create another null. You can copy and paste this one and connect it to the constraints. So we can call this out constraints. Finally, I will create another null for the collisions and call it out collisions. So now we are ready to cache the results of the RBD bullet solver. So you can add a ROP geometry output. In this case, we only need to cache the fragments. So connect the first output of the RBD solver. And I will rename the ROP geometry node to main RBDs. So for this exercise, we don't need 2040 frames. I will reduce the number of frames for the scene. So you can click here in global animation options to the left and change the end frame to 48. So click on apply and close. So now make sure that the valid frame range is set to render frame range. And let's change the name of the output file. I will create a new folder with the name of this node. For that, I will use the h variable dollar sign $OS. And the name of the file will be again $OS. So remember, this variable will evaluate to the name of the node. Then the frame number with a padding of 4 and the .bgo extension. So this should be all. You can click on Save to Disk. And once it's finished caching, you can lay down a file node. And you can usually point the geometry file to the output of this node. So you can channel reference the output file by right-clicking on the name of the parameter then clicking on copy parameter and back onto your file node you can right click on the geometry file and paste relative reference so i usually like to color my file nodes with blue just to quickly see that i'm loading something here and here we have our simulation so one final note about the rbd bullet node if you click here on the information icon on your file, you will notice that the output for now is 36 points, 36 primitives and vertices. So all these are packed objects. And to create a particle emission, it's better to have geometry rather than packed primitives. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to lay down an unpack node connect it to the file node and now if I check the information for the geometry you'll notice that now I have polygons rather than packed primitives. One other thing to notice is that right now I only have the position attribute coming out from the unpacked primitives. I also have the name which will be useful but for now I want also the velocity to be extracted from the packed primitives. So make sure to go to your unpack node and under transfer attributes, make sure to select the V attribute and also the W attribute. It may be useful, but for now I rather stick just with the V attribute. Okay, so let's lay down another null node. 
let's connect this one to the unpack node and call it out particle emitter let's change it to black and let's now create our pop network so you could connect the pop network to the output of this node make it active and I will change its color to orange and call it pop trails so let's dive into the node and the first thing that we want to do is to set the source attributes and by default the emission type will be set to scatter onto surface which is fine I usually like to emit from particles but we'll take care of that in a moment for now I just want to press play you'll notice that the particles are being emitted from the entire geometry which is not exactly what we want another thing that I want you to note is that the particles are inheriting the velocity from the moving geometry which is fine so in order to have particles emitting only from the breaking pieces we need to create a special setup so I will go back to my sub context and even before I start simulating the RBD bullet solver I will need to add a special node called RBD connected faces usually you'll want to connect your RBD connected faces node just after your RBD material fracture node so I will create some space here and connect the RBD connected faces now what this node will create if you go to the geometry spreadsheet is a face ID attribute which will basically create pairs of primitives that are facing each other and a prim distance attribute that measures the current distance between them so for now the prim distance will be zero or almost zero but afterwards when the pieces start separating this prim dist will start to increase and this information will be useful for the emission so let's go back to our scene view and let's recache the simulation so go back to the wrap geometry output and click save to disk once you have recached your results make sure to select your file node and click on the reload geometry button so let's take a look at the unpack node if you go to the geometry spreadsheet you should see the new prim dist attribute and the new face id attribute now the next very important step is to add a node called rbd disconnected faces and this node will be aware of the face ID and the prim dist attributes that were created so let's connect this after the unpack node and if we zoom into the column and change the mode to delete connected you will notice that now we cannot see the interior faces of the pieces that are connected with each other in this case all of them since the column hasn't broken all the interior faces have been deleted but if we step forward in the animation you will notice how as soon as these pieces start to disconnect from each other the interior faces will reappear so let's try increasing the distance threshold just to see this clearly I will increase the distance to 1.5 meters so now only the pieces that are very far away from each other will start appearing and this will be very useful to generate our particles so remember we only want to emit from the inside faces 
So I will add another blast node. just below the RBD disconnected faces and make sure to delete the outside group. I will also decrease the distance threshold to say 0.1 and now only at the moment of impact I will have these new faces and I will use them to generate my particles. So let's go back to our pop trails. And you will notice now that the particles will appear only when the sphere is impacting on the column, which is what we're looking for. 